Hello my friends, this is Ranger Rob and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel. Love having you here, lots of new subscribers, we appreciate it so much. Uh, kind of a interesting day for us today. Today, uh, this evening, we'll uh, be uh, visiting another farm to look at some Idaho pasture pigs. And uh, uh, the gal that we talked to seemed very, very friendly. And so uh, when Sherry gets off work, uh, I'm going to meet her in town and we're going to go over and check out their farm and we'll try to record it. We did get permission to take a, uh, take a camera with us, so pretty excited about that. <clears throat> Today in Central Oregon, we have kind of cloudy skies. We do have some blue over there, but uh, they are talking about cooler temperatures and some particip <laughs> some rain. It's <laughs> a word that snuck up on me. And uh, uh, so, of course, I got to do my regular chores, check all the water systems, and see if the chickens are doing all right, and, this, and so forth. So, uh, the next thing I wanted to bring up was uh, actually a very interesting suggestion. That came from Appalusha, Appalusha Homestead, a uh, super nice lady. And uh, she was talking about, with the possibilities of things getting tighter, uh, shortages, rationing. Um, this would be a good time, especially if you have kids, to uh, cut back. Otherwise, cut back now. Get used to dealing with all the amenities, like subscriptions to certain uh, show or um, streaming services or um, services you're ordering that are just... Uh, you know, they're kind of special and kind of extra. And it's like, you know, this is the time that you might want to cut some of that stuff out and get used to living with less, is really the point, is learning how to get along with all the, without all the extra amenities out there. Uh, cut out a little bit of eating out so much. Get in the habit of, uh, oh, let's go out to dinner tonight. Oh, let's get in the habit of maybe cooking our dinner. Um, the way you buy food, uh, how much fuel you'll spend, taking off on road trips when you really didn't need to, and start learning how to live uh, more frugal. Um, is, uh, especially if you have kids, because it kind of gives them the opportunity to adapt <coughs> instead of one all of a sudden. Because... If something happens where the housing market goes, the economy goes, um, stock market crash or something like that, uh, it's going to happen instantly. And would you rather uh, do it, you know, start letting go of these amenities a little early and it's only going to save you money. It's just like, look at it this way, more chances to put money in the bank, maybe more chances to uh, build up your food supply a little bit and stuff. And uh, what's it going to hurt? Um, you'll save money. You'll have more family time. Uh, you know, it just it seems like a really good suggestion. And uh, not necessarily for me, but Sherry and I have already done it. We don't have cable service. We don't have dish. We don't have anything like that. Um, we do have Netflix. And uh, we could live without Netflix. That's the only amenity we have. Um, but we've cut so many out, we have Netflix because we don't have the others. So uh, we're kind of getting used to it. Um, Sherry and I really don't go out to dinner much. And uh, it's been nice because it's really helped us keep uh, money in our, in our pockets. So anyway, it's a suggestion. You might want to consider it. Now let's talk about... Uh, the future of this place. Now, uh, we've been uh, doing a lot more studying on Joe Sullivan's uh, 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 practices, uh, which is not just his, but... Um, and, for example, 
how we do our com compost is great. However, if we want to do it on a bigger scale, uh, we may have to change this process a little bit. Uh, I think we're going to maybe add one more unit to this one because uh, we can hardly... This one fills up so quick and this one we're trying to let it break down. It's actually looking pretty good. Um, it's amazing. You won't believe how much stuff we've put into this compost bin and it keeps breaking down. And this one, if you look at old, old videos from a week or so ago, this thing was over the top and it's already dropping. So yeah, quite amazing. And uh, what we want to do is develop this property behind us. So I know it's kind of hard to see with a fence there, but that property behind us is just bare land. And after doing some studying, we're finding that we could actually try to develop this without machinery, but doing it with compost and animals. And so when we get to Idaho pasture pigs, and one of our viewers was asking, "Would we? are we going to name our pigs? Yeah, you got to name pigs. I don't care what it is. Um, this is where we want to do the first paddock, right here in this area. This is kind of our sacrificial area. Now, whatever size we make this out to, you can see we've got kind of a curve here. We'll probably take the paddock out to about here and give them the young pigs some grass right away. Now, once we get the size kind of down to what we want, we'll probably go ahead and put a wallow in here. <clears throat> But then, what we're going to start doing is bringing our compost out the back gate here and make a mobile paddock by using wire fencing, electric fencing, and build paddocks about the same size, side by side. But let them have this land here. Once we put the compost in, let them blend it let them add to it, and then we'll continue to do that process through different parts of this property. Now behind them, those chickens are in their second year, and uh, I consider that they're getting ready to kind of retire. In the meantime, I think we'll build a mobile chicken house with nesting boxes, and We'll start in here because we got extra fencing and start teaching our chickens to free range. And they can still lay their eggs in the mobile uh, chicken hutch um, tractor. And uh, we'll move them around here a little bit till they're used to using, once again, they'll be uh, um, protected with a electric fence. And uh, I'm going to clip their wings so they are, are safe and once they kind of learn how to use and stay within their uh, new equipment then they'll start going out here and go behind the pigs and work in anything that the pigs have left into the into the dirt and we'll keep moving the paddocks and the pigs first um, compost pigs second and chickens after that uh, to finish the job and just keep that pattern going uh, in the meantime, we'll probably order more Rhode Island Reds to replace uh, our laying chickens, and we'll probably leave our laying chickens, uh, or, you know, our youngins, in there for a year at a time, and then let them retire into um, being out here. And we could change that. So, uh, um, I can also do more fencing in the back to really seal this place up. But if I teach the animals how to use electric fencing, I don't have to spend thousands of dollars putting in a new fence along the far back side right away. Um, uh, because I can contain our animals with electric fencing. So we'll see how that goes, but that's kind of some of the conversations Sherry and I have been having about how to develop this property, how to bring it to life, 
how to bring the soil to life. And also, we know this, these practices will bring in wildlife. So we have to be able to allow them. That's not going to be an evil thing. Coyotes have purpose. Hawks and owls have purpose. So we got to find a way to coexist as they start coming back. I mean, it's just like, you know, if you look at this one tree, we have a birdhouse right here. Well, if I happen to have any problems with rodents or anything, I need to put some boxes out here to make a good place for owls to live. Because the owls will help us keep rodents down. Because we get like the little prairie, uh, the, I don't know what you call them, but um, muskrats or, uh, oh, we got some little critters that'll tear up your ground really good. And we don't have any trouble with mice or anything. And uh, that's another question we have is why, because we keep cameras out here, our chickens are on the ground, there's food on the ground, and at night we have cameras on this place, we have no mice. Why? Is it one, that they haven't discovered it? Or two, did I create a system out here that brought some predators out here? Maybe I have a gopher snake. Maybe I have some hawks or owls already in this area that are helping to maintain our rodents. Um, I just wish they'd take care of the garage. But uh, we don't know what it is. And uh, we also got to embrace that if we're going to be more eco-friendly, we will be inviting more outside nature. And we need to let them do their jobs. For example, I was kind of complaining that I've opened the sides of my greenhouse and uh, I thought I was letting a lot of critters in. And what I was actually doing is, I, is I'm making my plants weaker because I'm not giving them exposure to natural things like predators. So I have an aphid problem in there. If I had kept this thing open all summer, would I have uh, been able to maintain my ladybugs better? Or would the natural ladybugs come in because it was a source of food, because there was aphids in there? Um, my mindset <coughs> has totally changed. For ex another example, the, if you look at last year's videos, this place was barren. It was just dirt and a couple of sage. But if you look at it now, <coughs> look along the edges here. I know what you see. You see weeds, don't you? you see uh, grass. Look at this. Where in the heck did all that come from? I didn't plant it. So what's it? What's what's happening here? This soil. It's coming to life. One of the things Joel Sullivan was saying is a lot of times there's old seed and stuff that stay in the dirt and they don't germinate unless the conditions are right. <clears throat> so what's happening now is um, these this cover crop is developing the soil in its own little ways. So coexisting with an area where I can grow, along with natural cover crop, will help develop the soil into really, really good soil. So let me show you a good example of that. Now, let me show you something amazing. So, uh, Sherry's folks, for the last three or four years before uh, we bought this place, they couldn't maintain this property very well. And so this area here is amazing. And what do you say? We say, what's happening here? Well, these are pine trees and those are pine needles. And then when we got here, now we put beauty bark in here since then. But what we found out is, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Bell just caught a mouse. Amazing. 
<laughs> Let's go see what she did. I'll get back to the story, but what'd you get, Belle? What is it? Amazing, kid. How did you find a mouse? Wow, I've got a dog mouse catcher. She did catch a little mouse. She's sure proud of that. Uh, I'm not gonna deter from that. So, uh, look at this, this pine needles right here. <laughs> now, there's beauty bark under here but it was before, but I'll, I'll show you here. Let's move some of this, okay? Now, this is the beauty bark. Now, if I go down deeper, Oh, this is kind of thick here. Anyway, <laughs> my point is this soil was deep, dark, rich soil. And yet when they built this area, they just put regular uh, uh, filtered dirt in here with a little bit of a uh, gardening uh, soil. But the soil itself increased itself um, naturally because of this mulch that's in here and over now this is really fresh but when we got here there was three years worth of it and the soil underneath these pine needles was amazing it is amazing it still is and uh, so we don't freak out too much when we get all these pine needles we just when we're ready to plant we just uh, rake them off now but this stuff encourage uh, growth in the soil and made it richer and more healthier. And everything we put in almost any of our garden beds now, because they sat around for three or four years with cover crop on them, uh, are amazing. I can grow anything. And uh, that's what's starting to happen over at the big garden that we just showed you. And that's amazing to think about. What can I do in those big fields to bring it to life? We'll see. <laughs> I have no idea. So uh, guys, I'm gonna, I know this is getting long. So I'm gonna wrap this video up up here and uh, we'll do a separate video for the pigs that we do tonight. So guys, I wanna thank you very much for watching. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. And uh, <laughs> Belle's way out there. She's gonna play with her mouse a little bit. This is the homestead life, people. I know it's like, oh, the poor mouse. But I've got hundreds of them. And as uh, long as they're hanging around the chicken coop, right? So guys, have a great day. Talk to you later. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.